first hardcore show I ever saw was absolutely accidental when I lived in Vermont. I went to Castleton State College. There were two local bands. I think I was like 11 years old. Um, and they were two like local bands from Rutland and they were horrible, but I was like, wow. And it made me go out and get a Ramones record. Yeah, and then I got a Ramones record and I didn't like the Ramones. Very seldom seen, it's like, it's like, a, it's like, a, like a Pegasus of slam dancing. I would have to say Armand from uh, Sick of It All. <laughs> Oh man, because it was like, you know, the, you, there was just some brute force behind that. And it was like, man, it was just a juggernaut because he's just a strong dude. And it was like when he, I mean, I don't know if anybody's ever seen the, the there's a show, Rest in Pieces, played in Boston. And uh, he's at the front and he's singing. And during, during he's, he's, he's got the mic in his hand and he's slamming it back and forth. And he hits this poor girl who's up front. And I literally think he knocked her unconscious. And you just see, because see, Armand is the nicest guy in the world. And you just see all of a sudden he's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. CB's, Chromag, CB's right before the album dropped. It was just, there was just so much tension in the air all the way around. Like everything was blowing up at that point. Every show, like, it didn't matter where, who played where, it was just, like, Youth of Today could play at the Pyramid and it'd be fucking boom! Chrome ads played, boom, but that was like, at that point, boom, that was like the biggest boom of the booms. Dan Cav from, uh, from Nine Lives, you know? Especially because anybody could have, lose his leg and have four, four vertebrae crushed and come out of it and still be a world-ranked Paral Paralympic uh, snow snowboarder. Yeah, Yo, you got to give a cat credit for that. Never, never, ever heard a piteous word out of his mouth. Yeah, Dan Cav. Clash at Bond Street. Yeah, I mean, like I've heard from so many different angles and different people from different walks of life who were at that show. I, I still do to a degree. And I grew, I grew up from like 85, 85 until like, you know, now. I mean, the building I live in, we were a squat. We opened it up, you know? We opened it up and we built it out. And this shit is possible. If you're, re if you're hearing this and you're living in a city that's got some kind of blight, yo, there are opportunities. Go, go take yourself a home. I'm talking to you, Detroit and, and New Orleans. You. <laughs> Definitely Doc from uh, Bad Brains, just because of playing outside the box and not giving a fuck. Um, technical skills, you, uh, these are all going to sound like Doug Holland. Doug Holland was astounding, still is astounding. Um, Rick Agnew from The Adolescents, fucking love that band. Bones from Discharge. Just on the rhythm case of it, just, like, just pure, bombastically, just fucking... Wall of sound. Um, yeah, for hard, hardcore influences, that would probably be it. A lot of my influences outside of that went further off into jazz and blues. Because, like I said, if you, if you, that was my format. That was my base, base standard. But then you start, it starts to sound the same. And then you start to go outside, like, you know, outside into blues and jazz and rock and whatever there is, you know. And you know, you, you, that's what helps to create. You have to build your foundation before you build the style. My foundation was probably built off those. Huh? Victim in pain. Victim in pain. Let's talk about let's talk about a rec record of DIY and making less is more. You know, recorded on two fucking tracks. Uh, all those recordings. And the cool thing about the two track recordings is that it's not, there's, there's not this, this product. People, people got so wrapped up in like, oh, I'm going to have this person produce it and that person produce it. It's not the production. It's, it's the urgency. What, you know, and I hate to toot my own, my own horn, like the burn record, the first burn record. People are like, oh my God, it's, it's because we had such little time to get our thoughts down and we were so fucking just, it was, there was so much urgency to it. Uh, victim in pain, definitely. Uh, Bad Brains Rock for Light was another one. The first Scream album, because they were already starting to step outside of general hardcore. Um, and then the Minor Threat stuff. Ha, oh, so fucking good. So fucking good. 
don't get caught up on yourself. You know, don't let them for a second think that your value is only being young. Uh, we live in a society that fetishizes youth and basically discards experience, you know, and uh, don't think that the only thing you have to offer is your youth. You know, oh, I'm young. That means you, that means you have potential to learn. So go learn. <laughs> Vinny and I had an issue one time and Vinny said to me, he's like, don't be an asshole. Nobody likes an asshole. <laughs> <laughs>